Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Motivation for Young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Now we're getting to our fourth question for today. How do we change the way discipleship is done now to the way the Bible says? Okay, so this was an interesting question. When I read it, I was like, Lord have mercy. Um, I believe we saw more discipleship in the Bible than we do today, but um, only God knows. Um, <laughs> I can only speak from my vantage point um, of where I am. Um just allowing it to be a part of our um, strategy, the, a part of the way that we do ministry, that discipleship is like, it's just a part of it. Um, however, as we stated in a previous um, broadcast that went out, is that there has been a struggle there, right? We see a lot of, um, it's about me, what can I get? And not being able to reach out. Um, I, I'm going to safely say, and if some people want to beat me up, let them beat me up. But I think I can safely say the, the, the arm of discipleship that we see in some of our churches is coming from our youth ministers, our children ministers, our children leaders, our youth leaders. But I believe it's something that has to be broader than that. It has to be a part of the scope of the entire ministry that we disciple folks because we'll have um different churches call it different things um many many shepherds um I, the, the the word is just coming out of my brain right now but there are those that are have their own individual groups care group leaders thank you holy spirit um that are assigned to a certain amount of persons and they do so however um I believe it's important for those that are giving discipleship to also um, be poured into and to be encouraged because what I see certain times is that if the person, the care group leader is giving and giving and giving and giving and they're not being poured into, then there's a lack in their um, efficiency and um, intentionality in doing what they need to do to reach people. So it becomes more of just like a title thing, but that relationship and that growing relationship um, seems to dissipate. You have to go back to the drawing board again and again and again. Um, so I think we need to go back to the Bible. Let's go back to the Bible because <laughs> there are several, um, several examples from the Old Testament to the New Testament that shows us what discipleship is all about. Um, Moses and uh, Joshua. Right. That's that's a one that um, I've been looking into um, as of late. I'm like, that's amazing. You know, Moses was he had this special calling. Um, we know the story from a baby in a basket being drawn out, going into the, the, the Pharaoh's home where he would be the deliverer of his people. However, in calling Moses, there was a time when Moses would not always be on the scene. Right. So there had to be that Joshua that was there to, to go into places where the rest of Israel, the rest of the children of God could not go. But Joshua was able to be there. He was able to see Moses on his best day and Moses on his worst day. And he was able to learn because he he showed him. There was, there was There's even a t part of the scripture where the Lord himself is telling Moses, I need you to bring Joshua with you to the holy place. I need you to bring him into the tent of meeting. I need him to see my presence and just see how I, you know, how we talk and how we reason and, you know, just everything because he knew that jo jo Joshua would be next. Um, so with our discipleship, we cannot be afraid to give all that we have received from God, knowing that we're, Jave and I are not going to be, you know, I'm much older than Jave, I believe, but um, Jave and I are not going to be youth leaders forever. We're not even going to be associate pastors forever, right? There's a progression in what God is doing. So we have to have those people that God has placed alongside us in order for them, not just to take our spot, but to be and to do what God is calling to be and to do. Uh, that was that was great. That was great. Um, I, I think, you know, if you look back, and this is before my time, uh, but just from stories I've heard, right, how much the church has, the landscape has just changed a little bit over the past, you know, decade, few decades. Uh, you know, back then, as I think Sister Michelle mentioned, care groups. I believe my church called it cell groups, right, where you had these, 
individual or several groups that met outside of the church in people's homes, right? And there, you know, you had a, a cell group leader or care group leader would disciple that specific, their, their specific group. And you would have this going on for everyone in the church, right? Um, it's still active today, but we don't have a full church participation. Not everyone um, participates in that, right? You look at it, it's usually now the younger groups and some of may, maybe the seniors that may still do discipleship. So I think um, in terms of changing it, as Sister Michelle was saying, it, it was all throughout the Bible, right? So we need to bring it back to be front of the scene, not behind the scenes. It has to be one of the core pillars of ministry, um, discipleship. It's not just about how many people did, you know, got saved on this particular Sunday for us to write down and keep track of. No, but how do we fully integrate these people into the faith that they grow, right? That they mature in Christ and they can be active participants um, to the kingdom and to the body of Christ. So I think we have to bring it back to where it's important, right? So I think that's partly, you know, for the church and leadership, right? That we make it something that's important again, but people have to make time. You have to want to also be discipled, right? And be committed to that, right? And I think that's also, you know, something that's lacking in our churches. Like people just aren't committed. People, you know, and I'm not condemning anyone. Sometimes you want, you know, these half hour services and we, we run home, you know, you want these five minute messages and you go home and we don't care about anything else, right? Just give me a quick five minute message and hopefully it's something I want to hear about that's going to encourage me, right? That's going to tell me that I'm going to make it tomorrow. Right? We want these encouraging messages all the time that's going to fuel us throughout, throughout the week, right? And we run with that and we go home and we don't make time for anything else, right? We don't make time for prayer service. Anymore. Ain't nobody staying for that. I'm going home. Who wants to be praying for three, four hours, right? I'm going home. Forget that. Let the old people do that. I'm good, right? So we have to make time for discipleship. The church it has to be something that's important that we push forward as a ministry, but as people of God, we have to make time to be disciples. Yeah, I agree with everyone. Um, most of my points overlap your points. So I guess I'll just repeat some of the things in a shorter way. So basically the Bible is was the only thing that came to my mind with how do we change from what they do now to what should be done in reality because I had an experience where, because I'm from the Caribbean, so naturally the way Caribbean churches are and the way American churches are kind of different. And there was this big debate saying, you know, like, should they do this? Should they do that? And I was like, they were, the person was saying, the point they were making was, it's America, they have a different culture. And I was like, but we all use the same Bible. There is no culture here. The Bible isn't a culture, right? So I would say going back to the Bible is what would actually help to change this whole thing. The Bible has instructions for everything. I, re I recently read the book of Genesis. I genuinely feel like the book of Genesis has everything the Bible has. Like, because looking at it, they instruct everything is in the book of Genesis, but then throughout the Bible, it's in finer details, right? So I would say that the Bible really have the instructions and everything that God really wants us to do. He even sent his son, Jesus, to show us, okay, this is how you, dis you disciple. And I would say, just go back to the Bible, make sure that you, you know, use the instructions God gave to you. Make sure you show that, you know, you have to deny self coming off of what Brother Ellis was saying. Um, people don't really like to commit. They're all about me, me, me. And what I want to do, five minute sermons, you must like, that's why like people don't even want to pass like a 30 minute sermon. No way. 15 seconds, TikTok, of course. You know, so denying self is one of the most important thing also. Because I think that's one of the things that Jesus said when he came, he was like, you know, deny yourself and follow me. So yeah, that's all I have for that. Making sure you go back to the Bible and going through the instructions. I would like to add one thing, if you don't mind, um, Brother Ezra, um, that I think is also important for us um, to do now, um, according to the Bible, is to when people fall, those that we are discipling, right? Say they fall, oh my God, we're like, oh my God, the world has ended. Um, that doesn't mean we leave them there to die. 
um, Jesus, how he discipled his disciples, we see that he, and this is Jesus now, he knew exactly who was going to betray him. Uh, I got 12 of y'all, one of, one of y'all is a demon, <laughs> a devil. Um, he knew that Peter would deny him. He knew all about this, but he was still committed to disciple them even when they turn their backs on him. Um, I, I, I don't want to share any names, but I, I went through that with one of my young people who are disciple that, man, I, I cried, I, I plead, I, I beg, I fast, I, I did everything I knew how to do. And this young lady, it seemed like she went farther and farther and farther away from God. And there was that one day I was like, God, I don't know how much longer <laughs> I can do this. I need you to help me. I need the patience. But I just felt God said, listen, if that was you, you wouldn't want nobody to stop. You don't, if the church write her off, which I feel like a lot of them did, wrote her off and thought that, okay, there's no redemption. I'm like, okay, is Jesus not Jesus? Is he still not able to save and to, to heal and to deliver? So I would cry before God, and it's like I had a heart for this young lady like she was my very own child. And I just kept on praying. I just kept on believing. And then little by little by little, I saw little glimpses of hope of her wanting to come back um, to just, you know, get the healing and get the help that she needed. And there were some nights when I would have to be up 1, 2 o'clock in the morning with this young lady. And I'm like, Jesus, what is this? But it was the love of God. And now I can see how God, she doing bigger things than me no, Brother Ezra. She doing bigger things than me in the kingdom. And I could just say to God be the glory. So I just wanted to share that, that in that, you know, we don't give up on people. Even when they're like, huh, I don't want to have nothing to do with God right now. We continue to ask Holy Spirit. How can I still be your arm that reaches out to them, your arm of mercy and grace and love and that patience to just wait and believe God for them? Amen. I also like to add in that point, just the don't give up part. Some some mission is going to take longer than others. Some mission may be short, but as you just don't give up and push through, just be with the Lord, the Lord is going to be with you. And also on the condemn part, um, that's not our job to condemn. The God have never given us that job. He have never told us to do that job. So that's another thing, um, issue that we need to change as the church. It's not our job to condemn. I don't care if they they wilding to the fullest of the highest of the high. That that's not your job to condemn. And I've been to the highest of the highest, so I'm speaking from experience. <laughs> but thank God with my leaders, they 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 didn't give up on me. And then like Sister Michelle said. Like the same thing with uh uh the girl that she was mentoring. I I I I slowly slowly was drifting drifting, and now y'all see you today. But yes, <laughs> now we begin to our last question for today. Uh, why is discipleship so important for this and the upcoming generation? As we look into the Word of God, we see that God is a God of generations. He's a God where we see Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Like there's a perpetuation of what was poured out first, and it went from generation to generation to generation. Discipleship is so important for this generation because we see the world that we live in. Let's be real. The world that we live in is anti-God, anti-Bible, anti-Jesus, anti-church. Um, so in order for, and you know that God will always have his remnant until he's ready to say, you know what, I'm done, let's go. Uh, but he will always have his people. He will always have his church in the earth. But I think it's so important because if we do not disciple and disciple well and be intentional and strategic and consistent, we're going to lose a generation. And there are some that are already preaching and saying, you know what, we've lost a generation. Um, there are people that they're throwing out the statistics that as our young people go away to college, like a very few percentage come back um, and actually have a relationship with Christ and have a connection to the body, to the church. Um, so discipleship is paramount um, to the extension of who we are. 
That's why we're called to make disciples because we cannot be selfish. If the 12 were selfish, you and I would not be here today. Renetta would not be here. Jave, I would not be here. But the 12 were sent to make disciples. They were sent to go. What I have placed within you, I need you to release it. Um, and it's important for us to not make a carbon copy of ourselves, but to ask the Holy Spirit of God um, to just ignite birth who God wants this person to be, that he has blessed me to disciple. So if we do not disciple, I don't want to think about what's going to happen in the next 10, 20 years, as long as God tarries of what the, not just what the church is going to look like, but what the world is going to be. Because we need these disciples' voices in government. We need these discipled voices in education. We need, we need these discipled voices throughout the various stratas of society to let this world know, regardless of what the society is saying is right, because we're living in this day and age where good is called evil and evil is call good but if we don't disciple this generation and teach them what the word of god says they will be led astray to believe the lie michelle you're not preaching behave um god bless you <laughs> thank you don't worry sister michelle i go through the same thing i go through the same thing because i've been blessed with this gift i i, I tend to use it out of nowhere so don't worry I, I feel you i feel you i go through the same thing java you can relate uh yeah yeah absolutely i think i went off on my uh my rant last time right mm -hmm. so, hold on uh, before you go how about you sister Amanda? you can relate yes i'm a teacher and my students called me call me a preacher so see god let us use our gift in every aspect of our lives it's just a key thing but um you could go and take answer not yeah I, I won't preach i'll just <laughs> i'll keep this short um Sister Michelle said it, right? Um, and I think in, you know, in the beginning, we kind of touched on it a little bit. Um, discipleship is paramount to the growth of the church. If we don't disciple, as Sister Michelle said, what will the church look like 5, 10, 20 years from now, right? And I think this is why it has to get back to the point where this is important just as much as we're making an altar call to pray for those that may not know Christ, uh, so is discipleship, right? Um, the Bible says in Matthew 28, and I, I read it last time, but it says in, in verse 20, or I read 19 as well. And Jesus said to the disciples, therefore go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in, in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. But 20 says, teach these new disciples to obey all the commands I have given you. That is why discipleship is important in this generation and the upcoming generations, that we can teach them, we can be taught how to obey. And I think that discipleship is paramount to the growth of this church, of God's church. And just adding, because we all, like I said, we all usually have the same thing. I believe that like there are a lot of persons, whether in the church or in the world, that like in this day and age, they're just circum circumstances and basically they are like if there are so many effects that is on them, like people are abused, or if you're not abused, then you're somebody that's in a broken home. If you're not in a broken home, then something happened to you in some way where you were broken or broken down. And I believe that young people, when things like this happen to them, they look for an outlet or they look for something to do. And there's so many persons out there who preach the wrong thing. And I'm not talking preachers, I'm talking celebrities that, you know, magnify materialism and they magnify all these things, you know, just they magnify so many things that are so surface based, you know. So us as the church to disciple is really helping to get them to obey like brother Ellis said to obey God's word and really and truly I believe God's word as I see it as a safety net for me for me to have a good life not a restriction or too many orders but a safety net so it's kind of like us helping them despite the situations and the circumstances to come into this safety net that God has given us amen God is a safety net 
Um, for my answer on this last question, discipleship is so important for this and the upcoming generation because if we don't disciple this generation correctly, every generation coming after that will be affected tremendously. If we don't secure them, like you know how to say secure the bag, if you don't secure the youth in this generation, God help the upcoming generations. But it's so important for us to disciple everybody right. And also adding the point of this or another. Like now, which is a good thing, we're all recognizing the trauma, the pain, the hurt, the stuff that we go through. Um, and th- we need God. Th- the generation need God with, with all the things that people expose with. with my, I got my stuff I got to deal with. Then I got people that are in worse situation that I'm in. We, we, we need the Heavenly Father. We need that guidance. And discipleship gives you that guidance to not only help you on a personal level, but help you on a spiritual level, also physical levels too. And we we need we need all three of those levels in order um to help the youth to the fullest. And this is the last video of the um series part four. And I just really wanted to um put that idea out there to everybody. Like we need this. I dedicated all of these four videos about the cybership because I know how important it is. Um as they say, as as you get preached onto, preach unto others. Uh my mentors pointed out to me and I just wanted to point it out to every single body else. We we need discipleship. We need to help this generation. We need to help this world because we we can't we just can't keep going the way that we have been going because we just see a lot of craziness that's been going on. Whether it's in the Caribbean, America, and all all parts of the world, like we just we need God. We need God. We need His help. We need His guidance. We need discipleship. And that's my last point for the day. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys so much. Uh, shout out to Sister Michelle, Brother Jave, and Sister Renetta for being a part of the last part of learning about discipleship. Thank you guys so much. This is it for the video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't already, like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Please turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload a video, YouTube will send your notification. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.